Hey guys, Nasp here. So, I wanted to show you something that I've uh, recently figured out. Um, I call it a switchable filter clock, and that's what this is behind this video. Um, as well as my fatty friend over there. Uh, so it's probably not a ri an original idea, uh, but I couldn't find anything on Google explaining how to do this, so I thought I'd just show you guys how I'm doing it. Um, but really, this is something that would be useful for uh, map makers or people who are doing lots of uh, command blocks, uh, people who are using lots of fill clocks, especially. especially. So, if you don't know what a fill clock is, uh, this probably isn't for you. Um, or if you do, but you don't know how to make one, I'm not going to explain that. Maybe you can uh, look that up on Google. There is plenty about that. Plenty of videos on YouTube and so on. Um, so, let's uh, have a look at this fill clock, though, because it's a little different to uh, a normal fill clock. This one, I can just, there we are, get that, is what I call a switchable fill clock. Now, in fact, I'll just show you, shall I, how we do this. I'm going to just demo it straight away. At the moment, it's not running, uh, as you can see. We've got a command block here that says uh, fill clock is on, uh, but it's not actually outputting into chat, so we know it's not running. Um, and this is how I switch it on. There we are. And you can see, it's plenty of uh, messages in chat now to show that that is running. And I can switch it off like that. Okay, so this is, would be quite useful uh, for a lot of maps where maybe uh, you've got a lot of fill clocks and that's causing a bit of lag or the commands that they're executing is causing quite a lot of lag. And what you would like is to have certain clocks to be turned on and off depending on what's happening in the game. Uh, so for example, with the Speedcraft map that I'm making at the moment, uh, there's a lot of commands that will run to um, animate power-ups and check for players on checkpoints and coming up to the finishing line. Um, but I don't necessarily need th those uh, commands to be executed every tick if there's no race happening. So this is a clock that could be turned on only when the race is actually on. Now, what's cool about this fill clock is that you can have more than one. If I just uh, come over here, you can see I've got another command block on this one. It's currently disabled, which says, uh, say, another fill clock is on. Let me just uh, edit that. Okay. And if I run that command again, you can see they've both turned on now. And if I turn it off, both go off. So, um, those in the know have probably guessed this is using um, a scoreboard called objective called variables, as you can see on the right hand side. I've got a fake player called test state. And you switch them on by turning test state to on or one, and you switch them off by turning test state to zero. So, shall I show you the command? Okay, so these are the uh, command blocks that I'm using to control these fill clocks over here. Uh, they are running off a fill clock themselves, so you will need to have at least one clock in your world turned on. Though it doesn't necessarily need to be a fill clock, it could be some other sort of persistent clock that doesn't have to run so often, depending on how quickly you want these fill clocks to respond to being turned on and off, I guess. Uh, and what I've got here are two uh, test4 commands, uh, which then pass you on to more commands. But just before we look into that, you can see what's going on here. You can see this one is currently, this comparator is currently powered because this one has at some point been true. If I turn the var to 1 again, then you can see this is becoming true. And if I turn the var to 0 again, you can see this is becoming true. So what is actually happening here has got something to do with these bats. Um, you can see I've named these bats um, fill switch one. They're both named the same, though they wouldn't have to be named the same. Fill switch one, but they are for the sake of demonstration. And what's happening is when this test for command, so this is testing for uh, st state, test state, sorry, uh, to equal one. Um, so I know it says one twice here, but that is the, the minimum and maximum. I think that's right. So it basically means one. Uh, and this one is testing for zero. What happens if, if one is true, we run this command. 
And what this is doing is it's executing on the bat set block command to set the block in front of the bat to redstone. So in other words, in front of this bat, this gets turned to redstone. Turn the fill clock on. And when we set it to zero, it is exactly the same thing. For the bat, it executes on the bat, in front of the bat by one block, it's turning it to black wool. Wool 15, black wool. So, I mean, we could just execute these whole commands in the chat, um, but they're a bit longer than the one I was using to switch between 0 and 1. Um, but it also means that if I wanted to, I could have named these two blocks differently, which means I could have uh, one test 4 block that then switches them both on, maybe in test state 1, but maybe in test state 2, I only want one of them on. And test state 3, I only want the other one on. So you could have more test 4 commands, different states, turning on different clocks as you need them. So, how does this even work? Well, a fill clock, if you don't already know, is constantly replacing redstone with a, another material. Um, in this case, it's stone. But just to demonstrate, I'll, I'll turn it on again. The scoreboard layers set test date bars one. Uh, you'll be able to see that if I destroy this, that fill clock actually stops. This one is carrying on going. Uh, but if I was to put stone here, it comes back on. So it's constantly replacing uh, stone with redstone, as you can see. So what we do is when we change this to black wool using that command block, it stops that cycle and stops the redstone and stone switching back and forth. Simple. Okay, so just to show another way in which this might be used, uh, I've added these two green areas and I've added a couple of other test for uh, kind of segments here which tests for this one tests for a person in that area this one tests for a person in that area and what that does then is it executes the on and off command depending on which area you're on so when I walk into this area the clocks turn on but when I walk into this area the clocks turn off again so you can see how this could be quite useful to maybe turn on clocks as somebody walks into a room and then turn off the clocks as they walk out again so yeah, that's the general idea behind my uh, switchable fill clocks. Uh, I hope that uh, maybe you could find this useful, or maybe you have your own way of doing this that is better. Uh, if that's the case, please share it with me. Uh, I'd be uh, happy to learn about a better way of doing this.